Well, this is the meeting of the Miami Township Trustee, Green County, to order on May 15th at almost exactly 5 o'clock. Um, we have some, our three trustees present. Cindy, our minister, our esteemed fiscal officer, Margaret Sullivan. Let's see, we have Mark Heiss, uh, head of the Chamber of Commerce. Jennifer Adams from CGA and Kick. Hey, hey. Miss Garrison. Kathy. Kathy Garrison, Jeffrey Garrison, and I don't know. Yeah, I'm George Lang Landon. I live on uh, Wil the Wilberforce Cliff. Wilberforce Cliff. And Bob Houston. Bob Houston, we met at the cover yeah. thing. Right. Okay. Um, I'd like to start with. Uh, I say this: um, a motion to adopt the minutes of May first, so 2023. Um, second. Uh, I will second, although I never received a copy. I don't know who distributes those copies. So. Anyway, oh, I, okay. We I'm got second. a system. A little anyway. system thing to work out. Um, you checked them, Chris. Mm -hmm. And you found yeah, I found the great. And I, I, I had two very minor name changes. And um, well, you, do you trust this, Don? Yeah, I said I second. Second. <laughs> um, and further discussion? Did you make the changes? Yes, I did. And it's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes of the May first, twenty twenty three meeting, as presented. Um, sorry, <laughs> Mr. Moocher. Yes. Mr. Hollis. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. The minutes are adopted. Motion to approve the payment of our bills in the amount of $43,740.77. General fund, $1,610. Fire fund, $36,048.71. Cemetery fund, $721.26. EMS billing, $662.15. Roads and bridges, a total of $4,000. $50.07 and permissive tax, 648.58. So moved. I second. Um, may we have a roll call? And it's been moved and seconded to approve payment of bills in the amount of $43,740.77 as enumerated. Mr. Moocher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Mr. Moyer. Yes. Motion is approved. Okay, we have. A lot of good correspondence. Um, regional planning, executive committee announcements, Yellow Springs School Community Survey. I encourage those of you in the district to fill that out. Yeah, with well, one more hour to go. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Don't be me. Don't be me. Um, Deandra from um, regional planning advises to exempt roofed off solar from our zoning resolution. OTA legislative alert. Frank Cook from the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association was proceeded with the assessment and with a big data request to Colin. Um, Green County Commission invited us to a dedication of highways in memory of Jean Fisher, Sheriff Jean Fisher, um, the deceased. David Graham um, about our tax budget hearing coming up or potential tax budget audit hearing. OTA newsletter, Hope Taft invited us to the uh, river float for local officials. OTA call to action. I don't know much about this, but we can increase local government fund for, from 1.7% of the pie to 2.5% of the pie, which chance of that is what's called slim to none. If that happened, it would be huge in terms of our general fund. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're being asked to um, write a little letter. Um, Richard Zopf requested a recording of the ill-fated recording of the May 3rd BZA hearing, soon to be a transcript. Um, thank you, Chris, for the SLFR project expenditure report. I know that um, I did it a month ago. I don't know why they wouldn't accept it, but I just okay. did it again. Cool. Hopefully, they'll accept it this time. Yeah. And Sherry Z Zage, Zage, that you guys know? Um, Zoggy. Zoggy. Constituent requesting a large scale solar 
uh, um, restriction, I should say, of large-scale solar in the rural residential area of the township. A nice letter due to noise of the transformer she's on Harbison Road, um, the feeling of claustrophobia that it would create and the effect on humans and wildlife. Colin Altman can, sends his regrets, cannot be with us tonight, and he said he will have all that data compiled for the firehouse assessment by Friday. Um, and Lacey Fox regretted to inform us that the microphone wasn't on during the her hearing. I will say that I had a, a cheap little iPhone backup and we do have audio and will be transcribed. Um, kind of as an aside, <clears throat> Lacey said twice she called to pick up last meetings, uh, the camera after last meeting, and or she didn't call, she came to the door and could not get in. Either the, the fire side did not answer, we did not answer. Hmm. And I saw her at a uh, yard sale, and based on that, I picked it up and took it down to the village. Thank you. So we have an issue with people not hearing on the fire side. At the front okay. door. They could have been on a run. Hmm? They're, they, could, they could possibly have not been here because they're on a run. Yeah. Because I, 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 you hear it. I but, mean, I hear um, it. I just report that. Well, we're, well, we're on the subject. Riley Dixon has asked, asked me twice since they have, they don't have enough staffing at the news, and you notice they haven't been here. If there's any way we could get a quicker turnover on posting our meetings, the, the video, the video that would be up to Lacey Fox, not us. And so she is because it's posted virtually the minute it comes back here. So I she mean, has to literally. do something to it before we yes. post it. Right. And I think June 1st is her last day. Mm -hmm. I just talked to her today. Does she have a replacement? It's She's got an advertising. <laughs> TBA. Well, the people who need jobs, we go, should go back to them. Anyway, um, perhaps June 1st, that's not much time. If I was going to say perhaps we could deliver it, I'd be happy to. Deliver it. Maybe that would speed the process, but that's only solves it for a It would make some difference, I'm sure. But with her, her successor, maybe we should arrange to just get it to them and turn it around. If today, if, we're, if we end soon enough, if you if you want me to, I'll take it right over to her. Holy mackerel! What service? Yeah. Cool. Over door. All right. So that's up now. Covers one meeting. Well, uh, but what if you leave early to go to the other meeting? Well, that's what well, I'm saying. It, as long as, you know, I, I, I don't plan on leaving early. Oh, okay. Then but why don't we plan to have somebody assigned after each meeting to take it to the bride? Yeah, that sounds great. And hopefully they'll get the person to um, do whatever it is that Lacey does with a camera after we're done with it. Um, next on our agenda, we're going to have a few questions for a BZA applicant, Eli Hurwitz, who wrote me a peppy email that he would be here tonight, and I don't see him. Well, you might want to mes message that we officially received correspondence before this meeting regarding BZA and Zoning Commission from Mr. Weirig. So yeah, let's add the how, correspondence how that we got. We should add that to the correspondence that we received prior to this meeting. Yeah, I thought I, I, I actually thought I had put that there. I'll add that. Because it was on my well, list of things to if do. Yeah. Eli comes later, we can yeah, oh, cool. that interview him later. And I don't think um, Colin sent a fire report, did he? I didn't uh, no, see it. No, he did not. So. And Mr. Dan's not here, cemetery report. So anything for cemetery and roads, even in Dan's absence? I had. Uh, or, or, or for zoning, for that matter. A couple people have asked whether oh, we have, what, to, what our policy is on spraying roadsides. Do you know what? I didn't think we did. To, to my recollection, this has been a while, obviously we do not spray ourselves any roadside anywhere in Miami Township, regardless of whose jurisdiction it is. We do not do any spray. But we cannot, I don't think we can, we can request that it not be done on state highways, or county highways, or village highways, controlled highways. I don't think we have that, mm -hmm. that authority. 
Uh, we tried that many years ago yeah. and got that answer. Whether that changed or not, I, I don't know. But That is, we asked that it not happen in the township and we were told we didn't have jurisdiction on, we only had jurisdiction on our own roads. Correct. Okay. There was well, that's, that answers what Do you remember the what, there was were. an incident in town recently that I can't remember the road though. Do you? Pol do you? Polecat Road was. Yeah. The picture okay. on Polecat Road was posted on Facebook. And supposedly they had started in the village limits, mm -hmm. and um, swooped around and sprayed all over the village limits and then into the township. Okay. Yeah, that's what I read. Well, that answers my question. Okay. Well, it it, 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 might, it might have changed. You know, it might have. It might have. That might been, have been 15 years ago. Well, yes. our it policy been. has been not to spread. That, that is uh, right. That has not changed to my knowledge. Um, we set our policy. <laughs> There were a couple of things on fire that I just wanted to mention. Okay. Um, one that there is a uh, working event on August 11th, a retirement open house for uh, Chief Altman. And this is just something I've put together to this point and anybody can make suggestions or, or say this is not a good idea. The idea being that the front apron would be set up for public gathering. Uh, potentially the bays could be moved back if it was more than a little public gathering. Uh, we could provide a nice sign overhead, happy retirement, Chief Altman, thank you, that sort of thing. Uh, I've asked Dan Young, from Young's Jersey C. Deary, if he would be able to provide relatively large quantities of, um, originally I thought we'd get the little truck, but he said, he looked back at his schedule and he said he was sorry it was booked for that night, but he said he'd be more than happy to arrange to have copious amounts of ice cream delivered for the public's enjoyment and the obligatory cake that has to be, has to be here. Um, and other than that, I'm not sure, you know, about public address systems or uh, who wants to speak, if anyone wants to speak, or if he wants to, he knows about it, and he is committed to be here. Okay. He's not going to take the day off or anything, so he will be here on Friday from 5 until 7, which were the hours that I was Friday, here. August 11th. Friday, August 11th, 5 to 7, in the uh, late afternoon, early evening. Sounds great. If anybody, as yeah. I say, if anybody's got ideas and uh, different ideas or additions that, that sounds great. you know, maybe clowns. Ah, clowns are scary. <laughs> we got a department hall. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You know, I'm kind of glad that the truck wasn't available from Young's because it was at Earth Day and it was a low rumble at Earth Day. The engine was um, kind of. Oh, really? Yeah. And it was kind of hmm. ironic. Well, we that, well that, thank, you, thank you for starting the planning for that. Yes, thank you. Well, um, do we have a public address system? No, I don't believe so. If we if we did, I, it was it was shaky. Our household has one. Oh by God, that saves twenty dollars at Dayton Party Rental or whatever. Because one, I think that's how much it was the last time we bought. We got one. And nothing's twenty dollars anymore. That's about all it was. What that. is it? Just a yeah. It's like Mr. Microphone. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. Let's and put some thought into that. I think that's all I wanted to ask him about. Well, he's not here, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, that's what um, I think I'd have some for fire too. Um, okay. So that assessments come. I want to make sure our voices are heard in this. There's, you know, I had begun the spreadsheets that show the number of hours we think is ideal for mm -hmm. work hours compared to what's actually scheduled. And mm -hmm. I thought maybe instead of doing my tape together things, I could get this printed out nicely and just have them addressed as, as our ideal unrealistic, that kind of thing. To, to keep the Frank Cook? To keep the Frank Cook. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah, and, um, Great idea. And now, also, he's good, according to Colin, he's going to interview us. Oh, good. Uh -oh. Good. A lot. People may not yeah. make the connection from before. That is, we are having a an operations analysis of the 
uh, fire and EMS yeah, operation EMS. on the occasion of Colin's retirement. Generational change for taking the opportunity to look at our whole system. Um, cool. So that and um, yeah, and a couple of good questions. So it's need not to be discussed in public. Um, Wait, I'm lost. What are you talking about? You oh, we were on the fire. I said I have questions I, you will hold until. Yeah, I don't okay. need to discuss it in public. It's just, you know, now that I know I'm going to be interviewed, I'll just ask them directly. Um, anything else for s regarding fire department? Uh, no. In cemetery, we established that we don't spray. And um, do we want to discuss about that entrance, or can we just have a meeting out of the? Yeah, we we probably need to have a little, a little more meat on those bones okay. before we get too far into it. Okay. Okay. Um, fiscal officer's report. Oh, 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 oh whoa, 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 whoa. Rep Rhodes, you got me Rhodes? Yeah, yeah. Cemetery number one oh, okay. or, or two, we talked about this, uh, I don't know if it was our last meeting, but whether we felt that prospective buyers to the Oak Grove edition specifically had enough information in hand to decide whether that's the way they wanted to go be based on our regulations. And we talked about okay. they get a copy of the regulations when they buy something and they're sent a deed, mm -hmm. but yeah. prior to that, if they should have a handout that says, this is what we expect, mm -hmm. we, what we will expect, you to abide by, do you, are you still interested in purchasing this property, this, this location? Specifically for Oak Grove. Specifically for Oak Grove. Um, and so I'm... They, they I'm, can't go to the website and see if it fits... They can you. and they should, but... But sometimes they appear in person and say, I'd like to. Yeah. Okay. So I, I made 20 copies of the specific page of the website for, um, for Dan. Okay. And so now he has those okay. to hand out to yeah. interested. Yeah. people. So yeah. hopefully it keeps clarity, you know. Yeah. I'd like to do similar process. things for the for the for the prairie, especially the do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. well, that, yeah. yeah, okay. The, uh, the the second thing the other thing was uh, you asked me uh, a week ago or so about Clifton Cemetery records. Uh, did you happen to see those? I found a pile on top mm -hmm. of my desk. Um, there those were in the um, the records record storage area of the township. There may be additional ones uh, in the safe or in the file themselves. Um, I'll, I'll a good deal of those came from the file. And then the other thing was, you know, a lot of those records that are on the computer in the software are generated from physical going to the cemetery, looking at a tombstone, and writing down names and dates and then putting them on there. There's nothing written down. Mm -hmm. It just came from transcribing the, the actual tombstones themselves, headstones. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in our standing committee reports. OK. Those are the but thank you very much. Uh -huh. And that's all I have. All right, roads report, same. Our road re roads man, one in the same, is not here. Any? How the roads look this week, Chris? Um, uh, about as you would expect from May 15th. Uh, they're partially mowed. Um, they're mostly overgrown. And and Dan's out there working on that right this minute. Um, it's time for me to take a drive around. The road surfaces themselves are in good shape with the exception of our, seems to be a reoccurring pothole on South River Road that. Yeah needs to be filled again. That's about the only place that looked like it needed attention. Cool. And I'll get with him about that. That's about it. All right. Oh, the truck, uh, we had a, we had a uh, interest, an interested buyer uh, for the old truck uh, who was at the uh, garage the other day mm -hmm. and looked it over, said I'm, I might be interested, you know, that sort of thing. Um, in addition to that, I don't know if you guys saw the correspondence. I guess it didn't appear here. But, you know, according to the revised code, if we have something that is surplus that we need to get rid of and its value is over 
five thousand dollars, I think something like that. Then we need to put it out for public bid, mm -hmm. and it says how you can do that, but it does not say what happens if nobody bids on it. Now, obviously, you just start reducing the price, which may be the answer. But I did ask our attorney yes, if she knew of any options or good options of you know when we exhausted our uh, <coughs> patience uh, for the public to buy it. Uh, on the on the gumdeal.com website, which is I think that's the one that's on now, uh, and I have she's been on vacation. And won't be back until week, next week, I think. So uh, we'll hopefully get that and then make our decision how we want to move along with uh, disposing of the of the vehicle. <coughs> yep. Yep. At the last meeting, I had the impression that there are people who were interested at a lower price. I imagine there are, but I mean, who had spoken? We go low enough. Mm -hmm. okay. We go low enough. I'm interested. <laughs> I don't think it's something to do with the dump truck. The last one we had, um, our former trustee bought it, but he bought it at an auction uh, in uh, Waynesville, which may be an option again this year. I don't know if that guy's still in business or not. He was. Anyway, I'm using too much. Okay. Fiscal officer, welcome, Margaret. I guess I'm, I'm here, so I, don't, I should read this one, right? Sure. Um, so I titled it Authorization of Permanent Appropriations and Supplemental Appropriations. The resolution 2023-27, whereas the Board of Trustees has agreed to cease payment of road department salaries from Fund 2031, Road and Bridge, and therefore begin to pay road department salaries from Fund 2021 gas tax and the following appropriations are as follows. And the gas tax appropriated 40,000 in salaries, um, 9,000 in OPERS, 1,100 in Medicare, and 1,100 in workers' comp. And whereas the following supplemental appropriations are increases due to the day to day financial needs of the township and the fire fund increased um, 2191, 767, 20 buildings increased by $1,000 and an EMS billing. 2281-230-360 contracted services increased by 3,450. The Miami Township Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so immediately. So, my second. I have a question. Shouldn't we reduce, by resolution, the same amounts in the Road and Bridge Fund so now we don't have equaling obligated funds? Well, I, funds? We just, well as I explained to Marilyn, um, my understanding was that you wanted to stop paying salaries out of road and bridge so that you could save some money, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? Well, the money that, is, that is, has been, was appropriated in 2031 and has not been spent mm -hmm. will just sit there. Okay. You right. know, so it's going to be there in the fund balance regardless of where it is, where, you know, I yeah. don't have to take it out of there and okay. put it anywhere. It just can, we just won't touch it anymore. All right, cool. That's fine. I just want to make sure that there was a, a mindset on how to... How, how that would work. Yeah, that's how it's going to work. We're not going to spend it anymore. <laughs> um, any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote. We move and second it to adopt resolution 2023 27 as enumerated by the fiscal officer. Mr. Mercher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. The resolution is approved. All righty. Um, I have one additional for fiscal officer discussion. Okay. Is that all right? Absolutely. Okay. I should have asked if anyone had anything further for the fiscal officer. A couple of recent things came up that I think we just need clarity on. And the one that stands out in my mind was the uh, dollar uh, increase in Brandon's salary that was. That was approved. It was approved. But at a special meeting. No, it was approved. No, we discussed it during an executive session, and then we came back here and we approved it in a public meeting. Is that how you remember it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Did you find that? In and if that's the case, no, there's a record. I thought it happened in, in, in one of our special meetings in March. Somehow, I think I did it right. I think I gave him the increase, and I must have read it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't do it on. But oh, what is your point? My point being that uh, we need to make sure because uh, 
Margaret's not here at the meetings, the minutes reflect our actions, but sometimes they don't get from them yeah. that to her to get yeah, done. Yeah, I think when you stop coming to meetings, I did I didn't think of how that gets communicated. Yeah. So we, I think we just have to be mindful yeah. of what comes up in the future that we make sure that that's, you know, written yeah. on a note or something, but that, that it right. gets, or that, it gets minutes. that it gets to her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all. And I maybe think. you could take a look at the minutes and yeah. see something that. So yeah. We do need I, to. I we do need to clear up the Brandon thing, though. Well, she says she gave him the raise. I'm pretty sure I did, and I don't remember how I found out about it. If Dan told me, or. Well, he thinks he didn't get. It. Okay. I mean, he, he asked me. All right. Well, I can look in the in, um, in yeah. the system and, and see. Yeah. It was oh, a well, if there's been an increase. <laughs> and then it probably should have started around the beginning of March, probably mm -hmm. our first March meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll double check. I, I, okay. Well, he'll get it if he didn't. Thank you, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Anything what else? else? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Well, this kind of fits in the zoning inspector who's not here, so we'll put, go ahead and move Eli from the beginning of the movie. Not the movie. This isn't a movie. From the beginning of the meeting to now, um, Eli Hurwitz has. Um, Raise your right hand, please. And, oh, no, not yet. <laughs> um, Can I sit next to you, Margaret? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, has graciously volunteered to join up, uh, as requested, about, um, join our Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, and I think, I think it's wise to have um, alternates on both, as oh, my alternates as we that. can, to begin training. And we Two, uh, there were at least two meetings this past year that um, BZA where there was not there was a quorum but there wasn't a full slate of people so it's very important to me. and if you'd just like to for people that don't know you introduce yourself Eli and what your interest is in serving on the BZA um, my name is Eli Hurwitz I'm the township president village resident before that I've been involved in um, village council work when I lived in the village and the environment committee. I, um, I'm on the active transportation committee currently for village council, or it's a group. I'm a district librarian, and um, I'm interested in, in the management of our, of our township and politics in general, and having a, my voice heard where and when when it's possible, and this is something that is not a, it's not as a heavy a lift as the township trustee, and uh, something that I, I think I could do. Uh, are you familiar with the BZA and its operation, its responsibilities, about how much, about how much it's been active in the past, all of those things? Fairly familiar with yeah. it, both when it was, when I lived in the village and people asked for zoning uh, changes in the village, and also for zoning requests out, out in the township as well. Mm -hmm. And because there's no vacancy in the board itself, as an alternate, you understand that, uh, of course you don't vote, right. but you do need to attend any BZA I didn't meetings. know that, but I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, so that in case you do have to make the vote, you would be uh, up to speed about you know what's in front of the board. Absolutely. Now that sort of thing, working sessions or meetings that are prior, just don't happen. But I just wanted to let you know that if, yeah. It, yeah. You know, if it did come to that. If Richard was here, we could ask him about how many, you may know, how many BZA hearings we have in a year. They, they used to be very very small and uneventful, and they've been more eventful. So. Some, sometimes not for a couple of years. Yeah, right. A couple of but years ago. Now it's uh, been a couple times a year. I've seen signs for about five this year, I think. So. Yeah, so it's not a monthly thing usually. Although we've oh. had a couple this month, at least. Um, Doesn't pay very well. <laughs> I get a raise. Not a lot of there. <laughs> Don't entice him here. <laughs> Any other questions of Eli? Uh, where is home? What road? I live on Meredith, uh, three, uh, yeah, and I bike on three forty three every day. Yeah. Um, so I'm a user of. Of, of these roads. Um, yeah, I'm an avid cyclist, so South River Road is probably my, south and north are my favorite roads to ride on. Um, 
Yeah, and then live right on it, right past Hill, and uh, yeah, where all the wild asparagus is, and <laughs> life's good. And interesting, I, the, the, what do they call them, not the men's club, they're now called the James McKee mm -hmm. function, where your mother received the uh, award for the year. Um, when I was campaigning, you stopped me and asked, when are we going to get broadband in the township? And I spoke to him at this event now, and he was unaware that Broadway band is coming his way. And it made me think maybe most of our constituents are unaware that broadband is on the way. I think I by the end of 25, that would be wonderful. All the residents in Miami Township should have a, a connection to um, fiber optics. Oh, well, that would be spectacular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I found a work on the solution, it. but uh, oh, you may beat the village. Good enough. You, you may beat the village. <laughs> That would be amazing. 2025. Yeah. Well, that's when it'll be complete. They're, they've already started. We've already see, received two permits for, for proceeding. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes, but, but you want to make sure that the original plan, because of the layout of the roads and the transmission lines and this, that, and the other thing, you know, they may have started in a couple of places in Township, but that's only to make a connection to go from here to there. Yeah. They're basically starting in, in Fairborn and working their way back not around not we're not the first we're kind of closer to the last book up if you go in a circle around mm -hmm. you know the county but between so, now i mean they're they, they've actually started on it in 24 they hope to have the backbone of the whole system in place cool. and then by the end of 25 everyone will be have a have a connection at their home hmm. that's wonderful yeah. Did you know that time? Yeah. <coughs> Margaret's getting it too. Yeah, we're way out. We're definitely going to be at the end. Everybody Margaret's gets it. Margaret's going to know it was out of the way. Who will be the provider? That's Alta, Alta Fiber. Used to be Cincinnati Bell. Okay. Uh, under contract with uh, Green County Commissioners. Thank you. Any other questions or a motion to? I'd be happy to move to appoint uh, Mr. Hurwitz as an alternate to the Township uh, Board Zoning Appeals. I second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, maybe we vote. It's been moved and seconded to uh, appoint Township Residents. I'm going to make you to your name and Eli I apologize. Hurwitz. Eli Hurwitz <laughs> um, as alternate to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, Mr. Moochard? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Ms. Moyer? Yes. Oh, Boy, thank you guys very much. Well, no. <laughs> like, come on, thank you. Yeah. You're the one who's stepping up. <laughs> we didn't drag you in. No, no. Which has happened many times, but we appreciate you coming so, in. A um, copy of our zoning regulations is up to date on the website. And, That's right. And there's a, I think I, in our correspondence, I think we read a little, little blurb of what the responsibilities are, but you could also. Google it in the ORC, the Ohio Revised Code, and it's probably a pretty dry read, but it's a reference if you need it. But this does mean that I'll start getting correspondence from, what do I need to do to? Richard will be uh, um, apprised Richard, of your new. Richard's office. I will see him tomorrow morning. Well, there you go. Then you, you can apprise his books at the library. <laughs> you, can, you can apprise him. <laughs> That'll be wonderful. Small right. town. It is a small yeah, town. Yeah, that's awesome. Right. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. You're welcome to stay or go enjoy the evening. Go bake some bread. Congratulations. Thank you. I like that. Um, See you Thursday. See you Thursday. Can we put right, you on? Does it send you a copy? Yeah. Just so keep I'm not trying to do things ahead of time. After the people in the summer to be a class. Stay the course. All right. Standing yeah. committees. MBRPC is a long meeting. <clears throat> I don't know how much pertains to us. <coughs> There's a whole bunch of age-friendly stuff going in. Lots of grant money available for age-friendly networks and such. I've tried wrecking my brain trying to think of it. I might call them how it might apply to the township. Mm -hmm. and Could it uh, be free coffee for but old people don't? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You already get free coffee. Old age-friendly events is what you're talking about? What's that? Over 60 people? Age? Yes. I think it's about services and things. I'm trying to imagine how we could, what kind of, I, I should ask them what, what, what are the categories of grant. And, uh, if you have any ideas on how we could serve our aging, I, I imagine like just like a 
the, the towns are in, in our township that our township itself is? The, jumping to Yellow Springs Development Corporation, we were given a, uh, I don't know how many page, a list of the grant, uh, rural grant opportunities, uh, and, and was like 30 per page. I mean, it's just an overwhelming, huge really? wow. bubble going back to the CARES Act. I, uh, the, anyway, still money, still flowing, still available, mm -hmm. and rural oriented. And it's just astounding, yeah, overwhelming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I might have to speak on later. Have citizens to be heard. Um, Pardon? I said I want to speak on later when you have citizens to be heard. A grant. Can we put that under new business. I'm going to put Mark under, or or if you want to say something to this topic right now, I don't see why you couldn't. Is this uh, something different, Mark? I'm sorry. No, the, 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 for 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 it's a rural grant. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the it's it's called called the Rural Energy for America program. Um, you are members of the chamber, so you'll receive a mailing on it. Um, but there, the right now the grant is covering 50%, um, and then there are some other incentives that actually can cover up up to 100% of the addition of um, solar uh, panels to businesses, as well as uh, doing energy um, audits, audits, and provide, and also along with that providing. Uh, uh, providing LED lighting and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's primarily for businesses, municipalities, things like that. Mm -hmm. If we get an audit for this building? You can. And it would cover 50%? For the, for the uh, installation, and there may be even more. They, I, I see th there's, there's a webinar coming up that will explain the numbers, but the numbers that I saw actually shot, showed very close to 100% coverage of the, uh, of the cost to install solar. Or to install some. So, as members of the chamber, you'll get you'll get okay, cool. on it. Okay, so these these age friendly grants are anywhere from five to twenty thousand, five five thousand to twenty thousand. Okay, funded 20. by the Dayton Foundation. I'll take the twenty thousand one. <laughs> what are you gonna do with it? You gonna <laughs> deliver? You gonna give car rides I'm to gonna, people? I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna help the age age. Aging community at 136 South Walnut Street, <laughs> <laughs> and they, my God, they need help. Okay, you can do that. Um, and then, of course, a lot of it's about um, transportation because there's a tsunami of money coming, mm -hmm. and um, they've got we have got 175 road projects of 523 million dollars. It's just in the Miami Valley, 523 million dollars worth of roads projects, 18 pedestrian and bike projects at 22 million, 22 bus projects at 220 million, and 16, <laughs> I don't know what that says, 16 something, so. plantings or plumbings, one or something, um, so anyway, uh, some green cat stuff, blah, 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 um, Track update of the big old thing. They, they had a big thing being reopened. A, a lot of um, water remediation to going on at the base for some oh PFAS. That's what it is. It's polyfluoro alkyl substance alkyl substances. They have um, and they had somebody from the base speak and somebody from Dayton City speak. And I could see that they are in a um, there's actually a lawsuit between them. They're very friendly, but there's a a big cleanup going on and lots of action. Uh, a $1.3 billion project out there, and the same stuff for PFAS, these class of chemicals, $40 million of it going on nationwide. The climate re pollution re reduction grants moving ahead. We sent a letter of recommendation. Thank you for reminding me of that. And I like to think it was our um, letter of recommendation that got them over the top, but it probably wasn't. That's it. <laughs> That's all I had to report for the NBRPC. Green County? Um, regional planning was relatively busy last month. Um, fair amount of reviews of 
um, geez, a little bit of everything, zoning text, zoning district, zoning amendment, uh, one amendment uh, that was specifically referring to um, uh, public signs, political signs, you know, what you can do with them, what you can't do with them, that sort of thing. Um, a large piece of property in, uh, in Beaver Creek that was being rezoned um, from Dayton uh, Power Light, not Dayton Power Light, whatever the new AES. Yes. Yeah, it is. Um, it's just a mishmash of stuff. So, and I've got the agenda for tomorrow, and it's uh, a mishmash. It's another mishmash. So, I'll let you know about that next month. That's all I have for mine. Clifton Union Cemetery. What's going on over there? I well, all we did have there. a meeting in the last couple of weeks. Uh, our pattern is. Before planting season and after harvest, uh, and then maybe a couple other meetings in between. Um, and uh, this took a, a very different turn, and one of the members came up with some records uh, that she felt ought to have a new home, a better home, and. Uh, asked about other records, and Chris has uh, gone through uh, some of our storage areas and given me more records. So we're reviewing uh, our records and how we want to preserve them. Uh, parallel to that, uh, we're we're going to be asking for others in Clifton to perhaps volunteer to help in just a big picture overview of uh, better care of the of the cemetery, particularly the older part where stuff has been falling over and when someone comes in to mow they just stack the Mm -hmm. broken stones up and we don't know where they were from and mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was a it, there's a I don't know if it's uh, in the stars or whatever but a, a level of energy that I haven't experienced before so that. Uh, yes, that's exciting. I was there, so I'd like to add that um, part of the conversation, well, it was mostly it was concentrating on better care of the records that we have. That there were some, I guess, maybe in the office at the garage and not in the Quonset hut. And you've ordered a dehumidifier, right, for the records room? Well, we've always had one, but I had to, I needed a new one. Yeah. Okay. Well, and then and then you know and then um, Tom Waddle asked me. He's like, "Well, Margaret, so you know, I've been keeping records of all the deeds that I write and so forth." And he's like, "Where are those?" I go, "Well, they're at home in my little office space." And so I'm going to bring them. I want. We need them all together, basically, all the deeds and everything. And so. I'm guessing maybe the records room at the Quonset Hut is probably the best place to put um, deeds that I, I make copies of every deed that I write for Clifton. I thought maybe bringing them here to this office, but it would be they would be safer here than at the Quonset Hut. We'll have to make some room. Well, we do have that extra room. We need to make some room because well, there's a few of them. File case, I mean, it's not a huge amount, but I just mean to. We actually have a couple of em empty drawers in in, in the file. Oh, we do. Cabinets that we have. Okay, okay, that should work. They may accommodate. Them. I just wanted to mention it while we're all here, so. Because all the Glen Forest deeds are in the top drawer of right, the one right. cabinet, and there's plenty of room left in there. So. Because if I always print out on um, eight and a half by fourteen, it's the longer we could fold them. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But so probably here is better. One of those cabinets is an eight and a half by fourteen cabinet. Oh, okay. The the short black one is an eight right. and a half by oh, fourteen. Oh, okay, yeah, cabinet, that'll. And there's only one drawer being used in that. That should do it. So I'm going to move that operation here. Okay, well, that's for the really sake good. of mold and just, <laughs> black. Just in closing, uh, I want to remind you that last year we did not. The cemetery board did not bill either of the townships mm -hmm. for the mowing and other work. It was it was paid out of the uh, cemetery reserve. 
and there's still almost 50,000 in reserve. So they have a board and we have oversight as well? Okay, I don't We don't have, I am. Oh, you're just a rep. Our representative rep. on okay. the three person board. Okay. Oh. Okay, I get it. You're a rep on the board. I might suggest with, if you have funds available, uh, consider contracting with graveyard groomers who we use in Glen Forest to do restoration and and they've been in Clifton before. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that's been a while, but they So they came to Glen Forest last year. Maybe we arranged for them to come to Clifton this year. It, it, it well, we, have, we are having another meeting this coming month, right? Right, we're going to have another month. We're going to meet to uh, stay on top of the records. Very unusual. Situation. <laughs> so I'll bring it up then. Thank Generally, you. Generally, they don't come around these parts till mid late fall, so. Right, well, so it's plenty of time. Yeah. What was and, the name of the uh, Graveyard Groomers. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Dan's got all the information of how to contact Walter. Mm -hmm. Interesting business. And, and his crew. They do excellent work. Yeah, it's important. It's, they've increased their price like everybody else, but <laughs> they do, do excellent work. Yellow Springs Development Company um, Corporation, Don. What do you got? Uh, the meetings of the corporation and the whole dynamic have changed dramatically since two things have happened. We, as I've already spoken or reported, that the community foundation is paying for an interim director, Lisa Abel, and her, one of her tasks is to uh, recruit and it'll go through the hiring process for a permanent director uh, which we haven't completely decided to do but we're that's that's the trajectory uh, and an executive committee of the board has started meeting a couple times a month whereas the board meets just the first Tuesday of each month uh, The corporation has applied for a grant to pay for training 3D printing techniques, uh, which I don't fully understand, but this is at a uh, with this training, you could be an independent starting your own business, but the, the expectation is that this is an area that uh, the new Honda company, mm -hmm. a factory being built on the border of Fayette County and Greene County, uh, will will want people with this ability. I don't think it's in Green. I think it's bad in Ross County, but well, they're on. One of the affected plants is in Jeffersonville, which yeah. is which is closer right to the, Green County, which is on the shares of border with Green County. Anyway, uh, this this is was not. I didn't see this on the trajectory of the development corporation. Mm -hmm. We haven't gotten a grant yet, but if we did, uh, then the size is unclear, but it's uh, could be hundreds of people. Uh, or hundreds of slots for training uh, but more broadly this is there's a just kind of an overwhelming set of things happening around the uh, building of the Honda plant mm -hmm. for sure. uh, there will be demand for a lot of workers where will they live etc trickle down for sure uh, seems to me there was another topic uh, having to do with the development corporation but I don't think of it at the moment okay may I have, sure. have one thing at the risk of being moved <laughs> out of the meeting I just wanted to make one generalized statement uh, about the um, YSDC 
And full disclosure, I was one of the three ori original signatories on mm -hmm. the corporation document from the Secretary of State and the establishment of it. So I felt at the time I had a very strong understanding of what, what the plan was to go ahead. And saying that, the organization does exist. We're also members of Miami Valley Regional Planning. Costs us about 900 a year. Uh, Green County Regional Planning costs us about $600 a year, I think. Um, so far in the three years that we look back, it, we're spending roughly $1,000 a year on YSDC. Our membership is 1000 a year. And uh, the the, the results of the effort that the committees put in and the results of the amount the taxpayers have contributed to it, I, I find to be disappointing to this point. They just, you know, other than the firehouse that we gave them to start up that whole process of what they could do with, you know, getting buildings and, you know, we just envisioned a a domino effect of well we'll do this one and then that'll lead we'll have some little seed money and so we can you know transfer it into here and do this and create jobs and etc 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 it just hasn't happened and having said that and based on what you had said I think at the last meeting I would have very difficult time voting to to contribute to pay the salary of an executive director out of taxpayer money up in my township, and, and, uh, unless there were some results really strongly uh, to be to be made. I, I just think there's an awful lot of wheel spinning going on, and I know that's part of the whole organization, and I've been part of a lot of those. But at some point, you have to see some results of things that, that you're putting your efforts into, and your and your money efforts. Fine, money. A little different subject. I'm only saying that because I have no idea what potential commit we, we might be asked for. But if you hire an executive director, they've got to make seventy-five, eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year, and even divide it up into by twelve or nine organizations. I'm not sure how many are in there now. That could be a you know another substantial chunk of change. That's all I said, and don't don't boo me out, please. Can I shed some light on it, Chris? Certainly. First of all, you're not the only person who believes that, and that's one thing that the um, that the development corporation has <coughs> been doing is try, trying to redefine itself because it felt that the, they they themselves felt as though they were foundering. Um, secondly, just as a point of clarification, it's not the community foundation who's paying for Lisa Abel. It's the um, she's a Morgan fellow. And so well, the money may be falling through them, but they, I believe the money's coming from the Morgan Foundation uh, for her salary. At this I point. did not know that. Um, the, uh, my understanding, because we are also a nonprofit that pays into um, the development corporation, is that the, uh, the idea of getting an executive director would not have an effect on her dues. Um, and so there would, I don't believe that there would be an, an, an additional money there. But that said, um, your estimate of what an executive director gets in this area for any type of nonprofit organization like that is about 100% inflated. Um, well, if you, you, if you can find somebody to do it for oh, no, no, I, I understand. I'm just saying that typically, typically, typically that position here, um, because I know what we're looking at for the uh, you know for search of a potential um, executive director for the chamber, is you're looking at 40 to 50 thousand dollars. Okay. But but I wanted to let you know that, that your frustration has been shared amongst mm -hmm. other organizations and, and they, they are, and I think you've seen some evolution as well, Don. Um, there, there's some evolution, there's some actual movement, there, there are some people who want to see some things get done. Okay, I'll, I'll put my name on that list. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had, Madam Chair. Um, One Ohio Foundation? What is that? I didn't know that was still on there, but I it is an actual, problem. that is the foundation, that is the statewide, down to the county level of distributing uh, opioid, op, opioid uh, lawsuit settlement funds 
which are just right this minute about to start being distributed down through the, the whole thing. And, and I just happen to be Green County's representative on that foundation, but we have done nothing since we were organized because there hasn't been any, you know, there hasn't been any money to spend at this point now. Where that goes in the future, we'll, we'll, we'll find out. All right. And I do have one additional thing. I'm going to bring the old Grinnell Mill back into the, yeah. into the four because uh, we are just, <clears throat> I am, <laughs> we are, we're just finishing up uh, dissolving the, the actual foundation itself. Uh, I've taken, gone through the paperwork to dissolve it, uh, our organization at the attorney general level, um, and I've, I'm, I have all the paperwork and I have it half filled out and I have to have it signed by the other directors to dissolve the organization uh, at the corporate level the, for the, the Secretary of State. At, at, at that point, obviously it will cease to exist and you know all operations will be um, under the auspices of the uh, Glen Helen Nature Preserve. Yeah, I wasn't here for a lot of that history. I think it was established to revamp the mill and do all the renovation and we still own it. It was rented by Glen Helen. Mm -hmm. How, what's it doing now? I mean, it's not under the control of Glen Helen now. The yes, it is. It uh -huh. is. Yeah. It's under operation. Yeah, but, but the, the foundation that was established for the educational and um, historic to the public yeah. aspect of of having a mill that old and uh, is not being is not being done by the foundation anymore. We will not be doing that uh, function. Yeah. And then aside, uh, somebody did ask me, somebody had pointed out to me that we ran a bed and breakfast there. Did we? Or we did? No. We hired someone to run one. Yeah. We, or we allowed somebody, and somehow we were, bed and breakfast aren't allowed, that type, uh, no, non-residential non ones are not allowed. Yeah, we got, a, a, we got a, a variance for that. A variance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From our own BZA. And, and now the Glen has a variance for it, or? Uh, it's grandfathered in. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let the constituent know that it's grandfathered in. Okay. This, this particular person was saying, oh, there's more Airbnbs going on the township than you know. Oh, I'm sure there are. And I, I, I think <coughs> I, as our, our code reads such that you could have an old-fashioned bed and breakfast where it's your residence mm -hmm. and you have a room and they could come down and eat breakfast with you, but at this if, point, Airbnb is If not that is and, um, to be a topic of conversation, I think we should put it on the agenda. Okay, Don Hollister. <laughs> that's all I have. All right. So well, that's, right yeah, there. you're right, because it's part of a bigger picture of um, economic whack-a-mole in the, in the township. We could put it on tonight at New Business or no, thank you. or next. No, thank you. <laughs> it's it's a it's it's part of the bigger well, question. Let's about, put it on the agenda about for the future. inconsistent application of the code in the in some in some cases, um, but not for tonight. Um, convening, uh, Margaret. This is us. Apparently, I've been told that there's such a thing as the um, records committee of the township, that every small government has one, and that the chair is on the committee. And it's for the purpose of maintaining records. And the fiscal officer is all on the committee. As far as I know, Margaret, we're the only two on the committee, so I'd like at this point to convene a meeting within a meeting of the um, records committee. <laughs> and we have- I think Chris we used to call it the records commission. It is, a, it's a commission. Huh? it is the records commission. Okay. Okay, records. Oh, yeah, and, be um, careful. We have Mark here. And um, Chris has helpful. done a wonderful job. He's got, he went through like a decade worth of stuff and went through all the categories of things that don't need to be saved by definition and, and, and spelled out what needs to be saved. I, you, you got a copy. There's a lot of records. If you have any objections, Margaret, to the things that Chris wants to. So, what our task here today is to, we've convened this, right? We're convened now. And I, I, we do it by motion. Um, we have to um, approve. RC2. 
submitting RC2. The records committee. RC2, this, this um, thing that he's, RC2, the list of things. So. I, I have it in front of me. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to make a motion to uh, approve all these things for. No. Uh, no. Sorry. Disposal? Yeah. Where are they all? There, I can't read his writing. I know. I suppose it, but he showed them. He stuff. did there, show there's, Well, they're still at the closet hut because we have not been authorized okay. to meeting with okay, them. Okay, but you have them. Yep. And I did see a clean, cleaner list. Blank forms and copies of something. And what? <clears throat> Chris, would you like to say anything about the, the broad categories but, of things? Or? But, no. I mean, is it necessary? They're, they're broad and varied, and they all have they all have a um, a time for records retention okay. that you have to keep them. Okay. And and everything on the RC two falls within the time that it has already expired. Um, yeah. When it says ops until obsolete, that means that this this item right here is we don't need it anymore. Right. right. Yeah. Now there are Whatever some that things that I have found in the records. Mm -hmm that still we will have to keep, but you don't have to itemize what we do have to keep. These are itemized on things that we okay. want, to, want to dispose of. So I'd like to make a motion that we approve of this list of things to be disposed of. I second it. I second it. Do you want me to make the motion, did you say? No, you seconded it. Yeah, I did, yeah. Any more discussion, Margaret? Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. <laughs> It's a lot of work. Well, yeah. And do well, we need to vote? Or we, I think remember the last time we did this, I did 20 boxes instead of 10. And it was just, it was overwhelming. The and isn't there a tedious yeah. process to come? Oh, I'll yeah. be glad to help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This yeah. Is, I haven't, haven't been in there in a while. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's a, the third step is removing staples and all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to help you with that. Before the shred, shredder comes. Okay, cool. Do we need to vote? Yes. Oh, all in favor? Aye. Me too. <laughs> Sorry, Cindy. You didn't get to. You didn't get to. Thank uh, you. You know you have a you have a resource literally across the street. Who is the records yeah. commission chair? My wife is the is the records manager and archivist for the county, and she she does make herself available. In fact, she spent a lot of time She's in downtown. Are you there? the chair or is Margaret the chair? Look on your. One of them is a responsible official, designs it, and the other one is the Records Commission Chair. Well, one says fiscal officer next to it. Oh, yeah, that's at the top. Okay, I see okay. that now. Cool. Okay, I'll awesome. do that. Thank so you. that would be where you would... I am. Awesome. Thank you, Margaret. I'm doing it right now. Okay, good to get rid of this. Um, and this... Close that, right? I move that we adjourn this... Uh, Records Commission. Records Commission meeting. By acclamation. Okay. Um, and now, the request for Green County Commission to create an exclusion zone in Miami Township for utility scale solar. Do you want to talk at all about Oak Cemetery entrance? No. Okay. Uh, remind me of your sentiments from the last meeting. Uh, last, my recollection is that uh, I made a motion t to ask the county commission to uh, ban s uh, utility scale solar in Miami Township and that you would prefer a six month moratorium. Is that? This is how I remember it. Then, because I'm prepared to make that motion. So, once upon a time, <clears throat> SB 52 was passed and then. Eventually, people came, people came to us and asked to make a restriction in the entire, asked the commissions to restrict utility solar in the whole of the township. And we had a hearing, and there was a lot of different points of view. You unfortunately had COVID and were not, and Chris and I, our thought at the time was, um, we're not going to do that right now. And one of the things was, part of that bill gives a 90-day period, if, if they come back and they want to do something, the commission has to notify all the parties, jurisdictions involved. They have to hold a hearing. They have to get our input. And still, at that time, they could take our input to restrict it. And that's what we believe to be true from reading it. And so... And that's what our legal department 
yeah. believes to be true. So then Chris was very interested in the, the small-scale solar and thought we needed to create a space for our zoning commission to write those regulations and got ahead of himself and said, do both. But I, and I said, what happened, Chris? I thought we decided this. And I, I couldn't say, what happened? He said, well, the, the law was passed for us to be able to regulate small solar. So I thought, mm, that's weird, because I thought we had settled this. And last week, you know, I, I brought up the idea of um, not, not doing a restriction on the entire township. Um, were you going to that perhaps? Um, well, my original notion was agricultural zone. Well, uh, it's just be simpler, I think, just say the whole township. Well, yeah. But it's okay for me. But most of the, all of the people who are coming to us are from the, well, the Kingwood area, or lack of anything better. Um, Which is southeast. Right on upside down. Um, right. Southeast of um, Clifton Road. Okay. So I was suggesting that, you know, Nicole had said everyone, obviously the overwhelming number of people want to restrict utility solar in the township, most of the township township residents. I said, well, actually, in actuality, it's a very small portion of the township, um, of course. Um, that's excluding the people who actually want to do it because they want to, their farm to become uh, a solar. So I was, this, what my contemplation this week was that, you know, I, I was ready to say two-year moratorium on everything southeast of Clifton Road, just so we could get our very two-year? So I thought six months is, was useless. Okay, so now you're suggesting two years. No, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not doing the story, mm -hmm. um, because it has a little bit of evolution. Because six months would do it. What are we going to do in six months? As, as um, Jennifer brought up, the purpose would be to do some due diligence and all these claims that people make about where it's good and what damage it would do, that we could come to some, have some actual facts to identify it, um, to um, make our decision. Meanwhile, I think Chris took a different tack and suddenly remembered our but original but with the 90-day window I, I yeah, where, so where are, you, are you at now Chris <sighs> caught between a rock and a hard place um, I was against the permanent moratorium and I said that that we had that you had brought up originally I, I was originally in favor of the six month in order to give Zoning Commission time to make a, a larger scale input um, for us uh, to the county and now that we've done that, that's going to be in place, uh, and we hopefully will get that. The um, wait, the, what, what did you just say? The What's idea was for the zoning commission to to get a better read of the public, the township public, as to what they feel is appropriate for small scale, no, for large scale, for all. Okay. Well, oh. I'm sorry, you're right for small scale, yeah. but we would take that. And use that as as a basis for what we would be requesting from the county. Mm -hmm. We found there was an overwhelming desire to provide solar. Mm -hmm. Then we have to make a decision whether we're going to go up totally against that and and ask for a restriction on the whole time, or or vice versa, or somewhere in between. To me, the two year no. is somewhere is kind of somewhere in between. I, I didn't I didn't know about the two year until just recently. I, would, I, I just, here's the I think those are apples and oranges. S small scale solar compared to, that, that, that we regulate is so different than a public utility that's approved by the state and has. And well, small scale could be towards 350 acres. To me, that's not small. Yeah. Um, but that's under so the, the thing, power siting board yeah. authority. Or it's below the power siting board authority. And I, what's coming from the West isn't necessarily better than solar to me. <laughs> you know, development coming from the West. I just, I just can't see. Uh, 
closing off all the possibilities there for two years. Well, I mean, my perspective is we have already rules about this. We have an agricultural zone, and it would not allow uh, the kinds of solar proposals that are being made. Uh, I, and I support our zoning. And uh, the power siding board overrules our zoning, and so I want to be removed from the power siding board authority, and the town, the county commission can do that. And solar still on the table uh, at a smaller scale, and then we're going to be talking about it. But I'd like to confirm that we don't want. Uh, solar installations over 350 acres or well over 50 megawatts that we don't not, not just we don't want it we don't allow it it just seems so broad brush to say no not anywhere never and not going to happen too bad sorry about your actually luck. you can come in we, we've done the same thing about uh, uh, bed and breakfasts that are not run by the resident and and they got a variance there is no variance to the to the green county commission's uh that's restriction true. that's to true it would be total permanent so not because except for the public who could vote out but i'm saying change. under our zoning currently yeah that is if you my argument is we have zoning let's enforce it uh, under our current system, you could come in for a variance for a 1,200-acre solar installation. Uh, well, it would be nice to have some regulations for a 1,200-acre. I. So you're saying have some standards? This is all up to the Planning Commission, mm -hmm. not us. So let's not get too far ahead of ourselves as to what we can do or want to do or expect to have done. Well. To be a little over the top, we almost got raped, and I, and I don't want that to happen. But do you throw the baby out with the bathwater? Uh, but small scale like solar. Doing euphemisms. Uh, uh, we're <laughs> we're undertaking a, a study of of how that might be uh, done. So we're not throwing a Are we, though? We're I thought we were talking about large-scale solar now. I know. I'm saying reject that. Reject Watch. what? <laughs> Anything over 50 megawatts. Oh, OK. We're back to OK. Madam Chair, so I'm, I think what's on the table, what would you, do you want to say? No, I'm, I'm, I, well, I'd like to ask some of, our, some of the experts in the audience. Um, this may all be a moot point. Do you ever see this becoming a moot point, depending on what the courts decide? Uh, when you say this, what do you what do you mean um, this? Whether or not we ask the county for a restrict uh, a restricted zone, um, regardless of what is decided with the Kingwood case, I do not believe this would be a moot point um, because they we have transmission lines going through at least the, I don't know where all the transmission lines are right um, in in the township. I am familiar with the ones that are associated with, that run through the southeast corner of, of Miami Township. And while there is space on those lines, and while there is agricultural land, whether we have protected it as a township or not, it will be a target for utility scale solar that is over, overseen by the Ohio, Ohio Power Siding Board. I do not believe that will be a moot point. So the, the, what's at the Supreme Court now, is it challenging the it's only it only relates to Kingwood. There's no broader claim they're making about. Is that how you understand it? Um, okay. Yes. What's at the Ohio Supreme Court of Appeals is just related to Kingwood, specifically. Yeah. So, am, am I right that there are over 350 acres of optioned land in Miami Township? <coughs> Yeah, there's probably about. It's so, you know, if you take out Cedarville, you take out Xenia. 55% is in Miami Township. Um, there's still enough option land to come back 
with a power siding board uh, jurisdiction proposal yes. that we could not block. Yes. Well, we could block it. Well, we'd do the same thing we did before. We'd oppose it. No, no because it's under new regulations at that point. Can you power siding board still has authority. Can you process in more detail how that will work? Wish I had the... I'm sorry, General. If, the, if another project does come, uh -huh. the, the part of Senate Bill 52 that you were trying to explain a little yeah, bit ago... I wish I brought you, the bill with Can you me. explain it in more detail about how you understand it, how that will work? I had it all at one point. I don't have it, it with me. It's... When they apply, there has, they have to notify the county commission. The county commission has to notify all the jurisdictions, the local jurisdictions, and they have to hold a hearing and and they you have to allow 90 days from the point from the time they allow. I, I don't know all the details, but there, when I was when we comforted ourselves with that. There was plenty of time. It wasn't just 90 days. It was 90 days after they got their stuff together and got their hearing going for us to have input at which time the county commission could turn it down. So, you know. We could request that, and, and I mean, we could formally request the county commission to restrict the area that's being applied. And, and they, could to point, use. they could point blank thumbs down yes, the project, absolutely. too. Yeah. So. I was going to ask your. I thought maybe you knew something about it. I was going to ask your opinion on how how effective if that's an effective. So if you actually read uh, the, the the code prior to the administrative code prior to the Senate Bill 52 revisions, if you actually don't know anything about the process and you read through it, there are public um, public meetings, public hearings. There's all sorts of stuff in there that makes it sound like local citizens are going to be aware and that they're going to have a say and that they're going to be listened to. And those were the rules that were in place long before Kingwood came about and Kingwood was subject to those rules. Um, I will say it did not feel as though the public had a say, that they respected our township zoning, that they did any of that. And so in my mind, the rules that were in place that were meant to be public awareness were, they were ineffective. So while Senate Bill 52 has added some language and some additional requirements, I am hesitant to say that those will be as great as they sound, just because but, of what we have experienced. But the very restriction you guys have asked us to make is, is that's the same source that they've been empowered to do two things. They could set up exclusion zones, but they could also have the top power to turn, with a hearing, turn down. I mean. It's as strong as the I'm one. I'm talking about like when a new yeah. project comes around and, and resident awareness, um, the ability for local residents who would live around it to be able to impact. We all have to go to all these meetings. We all work full time. I mean, especially for the group, the, the area of the township that has already experienced Kingwood, right? Mm -hmm. uh, those, your constituents who live there, we don't want to do any of it anymore. No, no, what we, including the people who've leased to the companies or, or the people who haven't spoken or, I mean, They we, know about these meetings just like we do. Half, so half of the, well, no, I shouldn't say half because I haven't quantified it, but many of the leaseholders who were part of Kingwood don't want to be part of it anymore. So it, it's even that, that side of it, the, um, how many was it? Was it so like, there were like 17 different landowners uh, even those numbers have begun to dwindle. They don't want to. Have, they don't want to have anything to do with it anymore. So I don't feel like we would be properly protected, relying on that part. Of, it's better, right? I will say right now that that is better than what it was before because our county does have the ability to say we don't want this. The problem is, is it requires public input, and that part of it was severely lacking. Severe, the, the ability for us to become aware, know what's going on, um, and be able to provide input. And it's a it will be a continuous fight for us. We have been doing this far too long, and we don't want to do it anymore. You know, we, we've made it abundantly clear what we want as far as that region, right? I, I understand your point about there is a lot of other township land, and, I, and they have not been as vocal as we have. They haven't said it. 
because, because they aren't they, are, they haven't had right. to deal with it yet. Yeah. They don't know any better. <laughs> they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. um, you guys know better, though. You've experienced it. You've seen what it did to us out there. So, I mean, you're kind of more aware than they are, truthfully. But <clears throat> I don't know where, exactly where I was going with all of that. But I don't feel like those extra provisions, um, while they're better, I don't know that they're that great for anybody who's had to go through this before, truthfully. Hmm. They're better than nothing. But. And first of all, Don, as an aside, as Chris and well, I can't speak for Chris, I can only speak for myself. Um, I think it definitely would not be a simple motion. Um, We're asking the town or the county commission to do something. It, 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 uh, we can, we can, by resolution. Doesn't have to be right, right but okay. Okay, well. It, I would not vote for something that isn't a resolution. Um, okay. And I Cedarville shared theirs with me, so it's plug and play or something. Um, although they were, I would be willing to support something for the people southeast of. So, and a, 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 an area for part of the township. Because that's some of the it, it, the the most vulnerable. At this point. Yeah, and the most weary. <laughs> and and what That's I think, vulnerable. what so, I think the, the nicest land, it, it, I, oh, I, I, I don't, <laughs> I mean, it seems, I mean, that, that'll be our two years will give us a chance to, what do you think about two years, it's better than nothing, or? Well, two years is better than nothing. I, I, and then we can see what happens with this. The, the but are you saying two years for the whole township, all the agricultural land in the township, for the whole township? Well, that or for us, to say, I'd be saying for everything southeast of. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would argue, <clears throat> ban it everywhere. Do our uh, examination of good policy and uh, good standards, and then that's a big play. make changes. You could do that after two years. Can I can I have another suggestion? So sure. you've I've seen I've heard two suggestions, right? Ban everything south of or to the southeast of Clifton, because it's well known the opinions there. Right? That is a Clifton Road. Clifton Road, sorry, yep. Um, and then maybe do the two year for all of the, the rest of Miami Township until you have had an opportunity to figure out what you would like to do. That way you do have a built-in limit, like you're suggesting, um, and you, it does away with the worry where the commissioners may or may not listen to you if you want to remove it, right? You, you did have that concern. Um, and it gives you time to figure out what needs to happen in the rest of the township, but it's also protected in the meantime. Because once it starts, you can't stop it. You're on the train and there's nothing you can do. It's true. So when, once they once they s submit that application, you can't get off the train, um, and you're forced to to take part in all the legal actions at the OPSB. It, that's where you have to get out in front of that piece. So if you give yourself a buffer to your window for the rest of the township, it gives you an opportunity to protect those folks um, before before they end up on the train, um, basically. But we basically we went off the train. We, we don't want to get on that train again. <laughs> More trains, please. <laughs> can I make a comment? Yes. Yeah. Please. Okay. Okay. Anybody can make a comment at this point. I think that you folks, as as, as trustees, are looking at solar because you're going to get you're getting pressure from people that solar is good, and. I believe that solar has a place in our alternative energy sources, not using coal, oil, gas, and so forth. It has a place. It's somewhere down the road. I do think that solar, we're going to look back 25 years from now, and solar, to do solar, is going to be a lot more expensive than what we think it is. And by that, I mean by putting solar on, on agricultural land, I believe that's the cheap way of doing it, and it's the quick way of doing it. And that once that, that solar is put on, on agricultural land, which as you can see, it's a, there's a lot around Yellow Springs, 
agricultural land is, is virtually gone forever. Unsubstantiated. Um, I mean, it's unsubstantiated that it can be recovered. That's uh, unsubstantiated. That's right. It, there's, it, yeah. hasn't, it hasn't been done. I mean, it, well, it couldn't have been done. I mean, this is we're looking at 40 that. years from now. Uh, we've got glass, steel, um, pilings, fencing. Um, the, the land's going to be um, underneath it is, I know we, we see that there's going to be wildflowers and it's going to be beautiful, but in reality they're going to have to, at least in other areas of the country that have done it, they're, they're using Roundup. They've got to kill everything underneath so that that doesn't come up. And, so getting back to, to Don's point that The agricultural land that's, that's in our zoning uh, should be kept as, as agricultural land. And I think that once you open up part of the township to uh, this large scale solar, and as, as you were saying, I mean, I've heard uh, 50 megawatt is, can be up to 400 acres. I mean, that, that's a lot of land. And that the next thing you know, there's going to be, we're, we're going to be developed towards Fairborn a lot more than we realize because we won't have that, that buffer. But on top of that, agricultural land has great economic value. It's not land just waiting to be developed for something else. Mm -hmm. it, it is a very important commodity what's the largest industry in the state mm -hmm. and it's getting gobbled up by housing and development right. and residential right. because farmers can't afford to to farm and some you know, they could make so there's, there's lots of ways of doing solar without destroying agricultural land that's what i'm just saying and i think that there needs to be more effort to to look into it that way um on <clears throat> buildings on um, uh, brownfields and so forth. Yeah, it's going to be more expensive to do it that way. I, I know it is, but maybe that's the true cost. Maybe we we don't want to look back and say, well, yeah, we've destroyed a lot of agricultural land to to do solar because it really looked good in 2023. But at one time we thought strip mining for coal and, and cutting off mountains was a probably a good good thing to do. We're still doing it. I mean, well, I, I hope not. No, no, I don't hope. So that's all I got okay. to say. I still contend that we put solar panels on both sides of all four lanes of any interstate plus the medians in the state of Ohio, we could have enough energy for the... Well, we don't have the transmission lines to... Well, you put transmission lines in. You know, you could generate enough electricity to power the whole state 100%. So what I but in Miami Township. So, so what you're arguing is we don't need any solar in Miami well, Township. To me, the argument of are we powering ourselves is, is a non starter because as long as it's, it's offsetting somebody's carbon dioxide, I'm mm -hmm. good. Yeah. But so I think. But when, you, Jennifer, you don't, you don't agree with that? Well, it's just, it, it kind of, when you, that, I get where that comes from, right? If it's offsetting someone's carbon use, right? It's, it's better. But at the same time, all you're doing is taking, you're taking all these people in the cities who are generating all of this carbon and using all this electricity and you're saying, you don't have to be responsible because we're just gonna put solar up over here and use this farmland for solar so that you can feel good about all the electricity you're burning. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think that city people use more electricity, more energy than rural people. Rural it's people concentrated. Are concentrated. It's Con just concentrated. Yeah, it, and it, all the electricity it, that's being put in rural ends up feeding mostly the, the yeah. metropolitan That's areas, because right? rural people there. I, mean, I, I don't think the average rural citizen uses less energy than... I'm just saying, it, you're pushing the responsibility around, right? Instead of saying use less, we're saying that's all right. We'll, just well that's in general instead of, yeah. I think Nicole and I have had conversations about why don't we start with decrease all our energy needs in half and yeah. then find ways to fill it. You know? Yeah. It's a very, Time where are we? Oh, yes, please. I just drove by, uh, it was in Michigan actually, I was there over the weekend and in Battle Creek they're putting in a, a thousand megawatt, thousand acre, 
a that a thousand acre development out. I looked at it on the side of the road. I thought it was a shopping mall going in because they were using vans and they were using dozers and taking like, like just clearing it. And then they were putting the pie lawns in there. And I was just shocked because I thought it wouldn't be that destructive. And I was like, it, 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 it was amazing. It looked like like a shopping mall or a business, like a huge development going in. And uh, that kind of surprised me. I thought they would be a little less destructive from putting things in. It did not look like the farmland that it was obviously ha had been months before. Yeah. And I, I do understand your concerns about urban sprawl because that is a major concern and it is just as much of a, a threat, right, to our farmland as solar is now. Mm -hmm. But there are other ways that the township can protect the agricultural land in my township to include, uh, you know, for instance, changing the minimum lot size in agricultural areas. If the, Preble County, for instance, they have their minimum lot size for land out in Preble County, I think is 20 to 40 acres, uh, which kind of forces only people out there who want to continue agricultural use. Yeah, they might put a house there, but they've still got 30 acres where they're doing agricultural production. So, um, and with more and more households um, looking at, you know, homesteading versus large industrial scale farming, right, because there are, there are certain concerns with that as well, it, it allows for farmland to be protected as agricultural um, without having to bring in something industrial like solar and, and thinking that it may protect farmland because we don't know what's going to happen with that land when they're done with it. We just don't know. And the infrastructure to keep it as farmland um, is is gone. So who's going to who's going to come in and all of a sudden be an industrial farmer, right? When we shut down that industry here, Try, so, trying yeah. to increase minimum lot sizes is very close to putting toothpaste back in the tube. Uh, yeah. It's just virtually impossible. We've tried it multiple times. I, I being on regional planning for thirty years or twenty seven years, whatever it is. Uh, I've seen it come before us time and time again, and it is just the pushback from the landowner is just horrendous. These people do not want to give up their uh, personal property rights uh, to sell off this land in three acre, I mean, whatever is established in, in the township now, in three acre parcels so they can eventually, you know, make money on every three acre, three acre parcel. They do not want, and they are very vocal. And it's their retirement plan. Exactly, and it just does not get through the, the local level of, of a planning commission. Mm -hmm. yeah. When's the last one? How recently have you tried that? Oh, goodness. Uh, I don't know. Um, right, uh, right after, I think, uh, we completed a comprehensive plan and, and we were committed to agriculture in the township. I think there was some investigation as to you know some in initial work, and it never went anywhere. Um, so that would be about ten years ago. Yeah. Well, I st <laughs> I start from I'm repeating myself. I start from our existing uh, zoning and our goal of being an agricultural township and I would like to take action that would uh, protect our current zoning and I'm also open to evaluating how could solar be meshed with our current zoning. Uh, I see having the, asking the County Commission to uh, up front uh, oppose, ban uh, utility scale solar uh, as immediate protection while we go ahead with examining smaller scale options. Uh, Put a time and I have I have a picture of what that might look like, but that's not my current topic. Do you have a time frame on that? 
And I'm looking at Dayton area, not just our township. Do you have a time frame on your request to the commission? I would say permanent. Okay, well, that doesn't give us any time, any you know, set amount of time to make all these you know decisions and recommendations. I understand. We can go back and you know, all of it, half of this is window dressing because you can at any time go back and ask them to either restrict right. something, take the restrictions off. Or extend they can the extend the restrictions, make it smaller or larger, and they can do it on, on their own volition without without our permission. So yeah, we're doing a lot of thinking, which we should do, but you know, does it have much teeth? Maybe a little baby teeth. But there's a um, there's a psychological effect, I think, on the the company. I mean, if we if we become your your other two townships have created exclusion zones, or they, they best, so, and leaving us open to the easy, the easy target. As well, given that there are existing um, options on more than 350 acres in our township, uh, I would, I would be, it would be fine with me uh, or I would go along with requesting a ban uh, southeast of Clifton Road, although I think it would be just as good to do the whole township. How about you? I could, I I could go along with a, uh, I could go along for asking the commission for an exclusion zone southeast of Clifton Road for two years. Do you have time on yours? I'm sorry. Permanent. 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 Sure. But I'm, I'm up for compromise. Or as long as the United States exists. Okay. I mean, we have to. That's uh, I mean, potential. I. Yeah. I would. I don't want to. I would go with Maryland's. Well, the idea of the exclusion zone southeast of Clifton Road, but on a two-year frame. And having said that, I, I would be willing to take care of getting the resolution and using cedar bills as a model well and then let's let's it. spend five minutes doing that and pass it tonight mm -hmm. no because no i no i i'm not are, would you like to do i don't have a copy of it in front of me and we have to they they want to know when when are the date because you know they want to know when we held hearings and when we you know i I've, I've had continuing conversations with commissioners and the county administrator and they're ready to take a motion from us like a one sentence I'm not I, willing to do that I but, think that's um, too big of a ask why are you hesitant um, of whether what process do you need to go through before you're willing to do the restrictions southeast of Clifton Road write the write the legislation this week it's oh, not, oh, okay. It, I thought you were talking yeah, about he just wants We to, aren't doing legislation. The county commission is. We're asking them to take an action that they could take without our asking. Writing a resolution for that mm -hmm. to be done. But if you guys... We are, are resolved mm -hmm. to request this action from okay. the county commission. And so if, when they look back in history, it's not in some little minutes. It's, it's a part of our legislation that is in, in Margaret's minutes somewhere. I could just sorry. add one, one comment to that when you're you're just looking at the southeast yeah, I was part. <clears throat> Kingwood's reach was larger than that. Meredith Road, where Eli lives, there was um, someone um, willing to lease land there. Not for the Kingwood project, though. Yes. How does yeah. that work? Well, I don't know. They were just, you know, they, I, 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 they may have wanted to do it, but I don't think they could have gotten in there. There are other options that they own. Yeah. They're, they're so they but came they, in years they ago they're not to in get the, these leases from people, you know, before anybody knew it. It was really behind the scenes. What's, yeah, yeah. Oh, they did that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What's an option? What, what do you mean, an option? King would have <laughs> options. That is, <laughs> as I understand it, uh, the option for a lease is you, know, you, you have the whole lease written out and they pay you X per acre 
to sign an option, and then if they go forward the project, the lease goes into effect. Oh, I just and then you I agree to pay a thousand a month, or a year, or whatever. I just don't see how someone and, and Meredith Road could be hooked into their whole. Yeah. Well, they didn't get others um, on Meredith Road. But I before while well, I write it this week, I guess I just said it out loud. Um, Richard and others had suggested other. That's kind of an arbitrary line. It, it, it would conclude everybody who's had to go, you know, the whole Kingwood project. But other lines were suggested, you know, like east of the Little Miami. East of the Little Miami, and also there's a, and I, I didn't find what, I thought it was cool that there's a there's a school district line, that's a kind of a nice line. It it, it seems irrelevant to me, the school district line, mm -hmm. but Richard didn't think it was irrelevant. He, he and, and he's probably maybe somebody in this room knows where that line is. I do not. <laughs> I well, don't. it's but I'll look at those three and see what you guys. Yeah, roughly. Oh, mm -hmm. well, that whole portion of that whole portion as well. Roughly the oh. east half of the township. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So it'd probably be east of the east of the. See, I don't even know. Remember, it does. I won't go into that. Okay. Everything east of the Little Miami flows to the Little Miami. I've done the water testing, not the but the little website things where you can you can drop a <coughs> drop of water. And the things where it west of the Little Miami, it doesn't. Oh well, I didn't drop. See, we were all on the right hand side. Um, East side, so I so was dropping right. points okay. east of the little. Okay. And what was that? I don't know about what was that site. You oh, it's oh. forever. Oh. You can probably just Google one because there there are some reputable Google. Um, I would Google. Um, I don't even know what it is. Water, watershed, watershed, yeah, watershed stuff. Watershed stuff. Watershed stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, you could probably reach out to the Little Miami Watershed Network if you wanted to know okay. how they feel, like what areas most impact them. Oh, they, they don't. They don't want it at all. Uh, well, but if you were if you're looking at watershed, well, no, they, they right? did. They came out against Kingwood. They didn't. Um, mm -hmm. They didn't. Um, I was thinking of the scenic river people. That, that the, I know. But, but they, I do know that the, everything off to the right, all the points in Kingwood flow directly. So any watershed issues associated with a uh, utility scale project over in that area would flow directly into the Little Miami. I do not know about west of the Little Miami and how those waterways flow. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Obviously, this is a lot to process, even if you guys do not understand that. Well, why not just ask them to ban it all for two years? Give yourself time to figure out what you really want, and then. Make a new request. You're not going. I don't know who you're going to irritate. I'm not. I'm not as worried about irritating people. <laughs> um, I, I actually do have. I actually do have concern about getting off of fossil fuels. You know, and I know there's a lot to be said. You know, they, it takes fossil fuels to make, and, and to make these things. And I, I know all the arguments, <laughs> and the argument of. Industrial agriculture ain't that environmental either, and there's soil, billions of tons of topsoil lost, lots of herbicides, lots of phosphorus, lots of eutrophication of the lakes and rivers. So, why not ban it all? Because if for two years, what? Because it's a really climate change is a really urgent problem in two years two years is a long yeah you don't think so and there are many people who do so I but I have there's a piece of me and there there and it's not just people putting pressure on me it's people convincing me yeah we we got goals in this country well, of getting let's do solar just not this one <laughs> maybe um, well so how do we go about um, I guess we're, we're gonna have do, a do we motion or do a motion to do this or no, a motion to write the relationship. No, we just um, we just do it for next. Put it on the agenda for next time. I'll have it. I'll have it written. It's probably going to be east of the. Um, and then you can vote, Chris. Meet you. You have two two weeks of contempl three weeks of contemplation. This is a five week. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks. Well, um, 
we, we, we meet every Monday, oh, first and third week. Oh, right. And then this happens to be a five, five month Monday. No, a five, five month Monday month. month. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it feels like it a feels five month. Like yeah, it month. does. <laughs> okay. Um, but that seems like a thing. once it's written, it's either a thumbs up or a thumbs down, right? unless we vote oh, to I'll, change it. Mm -hmm. Separately, I'll give you a little paragraph on motion versus resolution. But that's separate. OK. Good. Sounds good. All right. How about, how about other new business? Or how about other old business? Other old business. I dare to bring about old other old business. I just wanted to let us know that I have not forgotten about our poor little cement apron out there. And uh, I'm, I'm still bothering the gentleman at our cement provider uh, to give me the information that he was supposed to be getting from the experts in Columbus, and I didn't have heard back from him yet, but I'm not going to give up. Well, thanks for your lesson in persistence. You're very welcome. Um, but I do need to go back to new business because I forgot that the uh, apparently the head of the tree committee uh, talked Cibellini. to Colin. Pardon me? Mr. Cibellini? I'm not sure who it was, talked to uh, Colin and expressed an interest in potentially uh, having the tree committee tree us, tree our land. Oh, do it. And I said, this is a perfect opportunity for Trustee Hollister to uh, uh, dust off his, okay. his, his, his tree I would, land. I would appreciate <laughs> that. And, and, uh, and consult with. And they would consult and tell us their use their good share their good knowledge with us. Yep. Yeah. I'll take that on. Okay. Thank you, Don. Just ask Colin who we talk to or <coughs> I, I, I not hundred percent sure. But anyway, that's all I have. Okay. I have one question. Oh yes. Could you just clarify what this resolution is going to be? I'm going to read a resolution suggesting we ask the commission for a two year ex exclusion over two years for large scale solar on everything South and east of the, is that, am I saying that right? South and east of the Miami, Little Miami River? Mm -hmm. Which would suit me, but I think you're better served if you do it for the whole township. But that's my opinion. Where, where you, it, it's a compromise because we had certain, I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but And I think if they ever start using old, old CMEX, cement plant land and they got a, a good, we could get a good... Which one. is in Bat Bat Township. Which is in Bat Township. Township. That's an old other discussion, but the, never mind. Thank you. I know you're not fully satisfied, but you're welcome. Well, no, I just, I wasn't quite sure yeah. what the discussion went, which way yeah. you were going. Right. What was going to be entire or just southeast of Clifton, or Clifton Road or the little Miami. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how you were going to, what you were going to do. Now, in the, during the last meeting, you guys took up a resolution to um, do a temporary moratorium on small scale projects less than 50 megawatts mm -hmm. until the Zoning Commission would have an opportunity to evaluate a uh, solar resolution mm -hmm. um, or language. I don't know how to say that. Did you say that the Zoning Commission meets when again? Third Tuesday. The third Tuesday of every month in here, yeah. mm -hmm. which is is that tomorrow? It, yes, it would be. It is, but they're probably going to be probably talking not. about another matter tomorrow. Well, uh, actually, tomorrow there's another meeting here. Oh, it's at five. It'll be over, but yeah, I would. Is it seven? They're at seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But you said they've got something else to discuss. They're tomorrow. probably no. using it's not work on temporary use. It's at seven. Yeah, well, since they don't. We have, have your, duplicated. They don't have your letter yet. To get started. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, don't, they don't have our, we have to formally ask them to pursue that, and we haven't yet, so. Okay, so probably yeah. we'll start. And I'll try to, um, yeah, maybe we could, I don't know if we could already have the Zoning Commission have an agenda that might be dreaming too big, but um, uh, that we can have it ahead of time, but getting in contact with Richard Zopf and knowing, not wasting your time by not showing up whether you're yeah. going to cover I'll call him. I've talked to him okay. before, so I'll call him. So, okay. but give us a, I first have to formally ask them to pursue this. Okay. It's a big lift in six months, but they, we have samples. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Were you a part of, I know, Xenia and... Um, no, I was not. Because Xenia has done, done theirs, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and Cedarville? Cedarville. And Cedarville. They're both in place, yeah. But at Cedarville at one time, they just had a moratorium, but the Cedarville is in place mm -hmm. now? Yeah. Okay. And it's about 40 pages long. Okay. It's a large document. So that's, there's a place to start reading. <laughs> Poor thing. I've been through it. Thank you. Um, I and entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second by permission. Done and done. Do I cross the camera again here real quick?